welcome to InterUni and I'm Karina. I'm a lecturer with the Faculty of Law at the University of Wollongong. Over the last few weeks, um, hopefully, you've been getting a bit of an understanding about Australia's legal system and law and why, in fact, perhaps you might be interested in studying law. Perhaps some of you have actually started to think this might be an interesting thing to do at university. And so I guess today I just want to give you a little bit of an understanding about what it might really be like to actually study law at university. Because it can be quite daunting to think, well, studying law, there's going to be lots of books and lots of reading. And certainly that is one aspect of studying law. You do need to do quite a lot of reading. But there's a whole lot of other things that it's important for you to understand about coming to university and studying law. And hopefully I can give you a little bit of a picture. The first thing I guess about coming to a university is that universities are a much bigger place than most high schools. In fact, the University of Wollongong at the moment has around about 29,000 students enrolled. So it's probably significantly bigger than your high school, I would suggest. Because of that, they have very large grounds. And as you can see in the slide, our grounds are really, really beautiful. It's such a lovely place to be. We've got some fantastic facilities. We have you know, Olympic-sized swimming pool and plenty of basketball courts, open lawns, and we actually have our own family of ducks that live around campus and wander around during the days. Um, so really, being at university, just for the, the beautiful campus alone, is a great idea to start thinking about why you might want to study at University of Wollongong. But because it is such a big place, if you decide to come and study law, in the law faculty, we know that it can be very daunting going from a smaller high school to an enormous institution like a university. So to get you started, the first year of law school in, in our faculty is designed into pods. We call them pods. Basically, you get put into a little class, probably not um, dissimilar to the class that you're in now, anywhere between 18 to 25 students. And you'll actually take all of your classes in the first semester together. What that means is that you get to meet 18 to 25 students and make some really good lifelong friends. I still have a good friend that I met on the very first day of law school. And so hopefully this pod system that we have helps you move from high school into university and feel quite settled. University though, because we said in the last few weeks that a law school and law studies is more than just reading the books and understanding the law, there's a whole lot of skills that go with it. And particularly at the University of Wollongong, we really, really focus on making sure that students get an opportunity to practice those skills. So we have lots of competitions and opportunities for people to actually get in front of a, a pretend court. Um, and as you can see, we have a proper court facility set up and you can actually have a go at being a barrister and having um, an idea of what it's like to engage in advocacy, talking for a client in front of a court. But we have lots of other competitions, client interviewing, negotiation. There's a whole lot of a range of activities that you can get involved in besides legal studies. Of course, one of the main reasons that you're coming to study law, though, is to actually learn about the law. And so, as you can see, most of it, or a lot of our core subjects are delivered partly through a lecture. A lecture is you and all the other students in your, enrolled in that subject going to the lecture theatre where your lecturer, like myself, delivers information about the subject. It can be a really good way for lecturers to give you a bit of an overview of that week's material, for example. After that, because the lectures are, are, are quite an um, information delivery format, we find in the law you really need to engage in discussion and talk about the law. And so most of our teaching is done through seminars. I mentioned the pods. Pods are really the same thing as seminars, except that once you're after your first semester of law, you'll be free to join seminars with different people and make more friends outside your pod. In those seminars, you actually sit and you start talking about the law and try to understand what does the law mean here? How does it work for this particular individual? What if we don't like the law? How can we change it? What can we actually do to make a difference in our Australian legal system? So they're the things that you and the people in your seminar will actually engage in discussion. You have a tutor out the front that will lead the discussion, but law is really about talking and understanding and, and being involved in the learning process. I guess uh, the other thing I wanted to do for you this morning is, is to understand what you might do in those seminars. 
because you see on the slide here, we've got some information, and this is called a case note, and often students can be quite you know, put off by that and think that seems very complicated and it's all very legalistic and I don't really understand. I guess I just want to show you, to me, how law works in action. So if you look at this bit of information that we have on the slide, it starts off with a, a name with a V versus or and another name. This really just represents a story of two people. These two people had a problem, they had a disagreement and they needed someone to work it out for them. And to me, that's the simplicity and that's the, the great part about law, is that it's about helping people work out their problems. The numbers that you see underneath, again, they can look quite intimidating if you don't understand what they mean, but they're really just a re different reference systems for finding this story. So you take the first set of numbers, 239 CLR 390. 239 just means go to volume 239. CLR is the Commonwealth Law Reports, and 390 means page 390. So it's as simple as that. You would go to the library and pull out the book. Well, in fact, that's what I did in my days, but these days you probably wouldn't have to do that. As you already know, nearly everything is online. So you would get online and look up the Commonwealth Law Reports. You would go to volume 239, and you would turn to page 390. And that's where you would find the story you would find the information that has been written down, the law that explains this argument or this disagreement between these two people. Now again, looking at this, you could be a little bit put off and think, oh, it looks quite, again, complicated, especially when you've got another page and another page and another page. In fact, it goes on for 30 pages. So that's, it's quite a lot to read. Now, you've got to remember that you don't have to read um, hundreds and hundreds of cases, you might only have a couple of cases each week that you have to read for your subject. But reading these cases help you understand the story behind the case. Let's look at what this story was about. So Cal number 14 Proprietary Limited and Motor Accidents Insurance Board is a story about Mr Scott. Mr Scott went to his local pub. He had heard from some of the other people at the pub that the police were out in force that night and were going to be breathalysing. So being responsible, he handed over his keys to the pub owner and asked him to hold it and to lock his uh, motorbike in the storage room, which the pub owner did. Unfortunately, Mr Scott ended up drinking uh, more than he probably should have and he was in a situation where the pub was going to refuse him service and he was asked to leave. He, at that stage, decided, well, if he was going to be asked to leave, he was going to ride his motorbike home. And so he insisted that the pub owner give his keys back. He wanted to ride home. The pub owner did try to discourage him and said he would ring his wife and try to get his wife to come and pick him up. But Mr Scott was quite insistent. Unfortunately, Mr Scott got on the motorbike, crashed into a bridge and died on his way home. This is quite a sad story. And you can understand Mrs Scott would have been understandably very distressed. Mrs Scott felt that it was actually the pub owner's, owner's responsibility, that he should be held responsible, he should have stopped Mr Scott. And so she and, Mr, and the pub owner, both represented by their insurance companies, which is why we have those business names in the title, got into an argument about who was responsible for Mr Scott's death. This is the sort of thing that goes to our courts, and this is our high court bench sitting here, and they had to decide was it Mr Scott's responsibility to make his own decision about whether he should have driven home? Or should the pub owner have taken some responsibility and stopped Mr Scott? The, the, your students in the class can have some discussion about what you think should have been the outcome. Maybe you can take a minute at the beginning of the class to discuss it. The end result was the High Court decided that it's an individual's responsibility um, when they engage in, in drinking alcohol to make their own decisions and other people are not responsible for stopping them. So they held Mr Scott was actually responsible for his own decision. You might think that's the correct decision or you might have a different view. And you might in, in class now have a couple of minutes to discuss that. But hopefully you get a bit of an understanding how the law works and how cases really are just individual people's stories. Hopefully that gives you some food for thought. Okay, off you go. Thanks.